In the last video, we talked through a recipe for how we can leverage embeddings and LLMs to help us create a diverse and robust evaluation data set for our RAG system. And in this video, we're going to cover those first two steps and work through an example. So we're going to take embeddings of our document chunks, we're going to run a clustering algorithm on them, and then we're going to sample from those clusters to form the basis of our evaluation data set. Let's get started. This is my VS Code editor. I'm going to assume that we already have the document corpus that we've created chunks from. And in this case, I downloaded the Llama index documentation from their GitHub repo. And I used Llama index to do markdown parsing to create our chunks. This was part of the uh, local RAG course I'm developing. But for this, I'm just going to start with that data. I'll put it in the GitHub repo so you can just clone it and not have to run those steps. And then you'll have the exact same data that I have. We are going to also include the embeddings that I used. I used this um, model here, which is open source and easy to get on Hugging Face. But again, I will include all of this data in a LanceDB data store. So it'll look something like this. Um, data, LanceDB, um, vectors.lance, and then there's these various things that the uh, Lance database constructed. And I'm using Llama index here and mainly just to interface with this LanceDB vector store and extract the embeddings. So you'll see here, we take in this object, we pull out this table, and we convert that into a pandas data frame. So here we just load the data store from disk and call that function I just showed you. And now we have our data frame where we have an ID for each chunk and the document ID that the chunk came from. This vector column is the vector embedding. And then the text is the actual text of the chunk. And then we have metadata associated with each chunk. So I'll just take one sample here to show you what a chunk looks like. This is writing the text content of the chunk. Um, all of these are marked down because of their documentation in GitHub. So you see this looks like an instruction for installation, custom installation from pip. So we have our document corpus that we've already split into chunks, and we've already used an embedding model to get embeddings for each chunk. So now we're just going to run our clustering algorithm. So I'm going to do something simple, just get k-means using scikit-learn. And the first thing I will do is take all of the vectors from that data frame and concatenate them together to form a matrix. So now I have a matrix that has as many rows as I have chunks, and each um, embedding is 384 dimensions because of the aforementioned embedding model I used. And then this is all of the code to run the clustering. Now, of course, you could play with this. There's lots of hyperparameters that you might want to tweak in different algorithms and so on. I'm not going to get fancy. I'm just going to do the simplest possible thing. I chose 20 somewhat arbitrarily. Uh, I'm sure the optimal number is not 20, but it will get us started. I think the real key is we want those clusters that are off by themselves somewhere and tightly contained because we want to make sure to sample from those. And there will be some clusters that are giant and kind of amorphous, and we'll just need to take a handful of those and see what we get. And if certain clusters have poor performance, maybe we can um, zoom in more and understand what's going on and, and segment that further. Okay. So the code was as quick as that. It took 0.1 seconds. We have our clusters, and now we've created a new column on our data frame called cluster, and I put the cluster labels in too. So now if we look at the value counts, we see this distribution. So cluster six has 262 chunks in it. Cluster one has 168 and so on. And the smallest cluster has only nine points. 
So one thing I like to do when working with embeddings is visualize them. Obviously we can't visualize all 392 dimensions, so we have to project that down into two dimensions. TSE is common, um, as is UMAP. In this case, I will use TSE. This little function just takes in the data frame along with some indices and a max number, and it prints all of the, um, the text for it and the file name. So this just gives you a way to quickly take a look at what's inside. Uh, you'll see why we use this later. All right, so here's our two-dimensional projection. We specify the number of components to two, so that way we get two dimensions out the other side. So tsne.fit transform. This will take just a couple seconds. There's also a question of whether you should run your clustering algorithm on the raw embedding space or on the lower dimensional representation. And maybe you even go to a higher dimension than two, cluster there, and then go down to two dimensions just for plotting. I'm going to do both, and we can take a, a look. Um, when I played with this earlier, I seem to get a little bit better results in this case using the um, clustering in the lower dimensional space. However, I've also had examples where it worked the other way. So I don't have a great guiding principle other than to try it and, and look. So I will go ahead and save those as a different column called cluster TSNE. This next bit just plots the embeddings and it creates an interactive plot so you can actually select points and see what they correspond to. So let me just show you what I mean. So we'll run this. We have this plot. So this is the two-dimensional projection of our embeddings. Each dot is a chunk. And if you hover over it, you can see it starts the first few characters of the actual text in the chunk. So this one is a, a heading that says basic flask handling user index queries. I move over a little bit. It's React front end all the other front end goodness. So this seems to be about front ends. Front end project structure, WebSocket disconnect listener. Okay, you get the point. Um, and then the color is the cluster ID. And in this case, what am I using? Which, okay, I'm using the cluster of the TSNE. So these are our chunk embeddings. Now, okay, that's just the zoom. If I go back and then select this box select, then I can pick some points and those are stored in this global variable here, selected indices. So I have this callback function that whenever I select points, it stores them in this variable selected indices. So now I can come down and use that function I defined before where I pass in some indices to get a sample of 10. And this is what we get. So file name is uptrain.markdown. The text, perform evaluations on llama index with uptrain. Okay. This set of dashes separates the chunks. I've defined that in my um, printing function. So this is the second chunk. It's also in the uptrain markdown file. And it's talking about, okay, how to go about it. There are two ways you can use uptrain with llama index. If we go to the third trunk chunk, it's also uptrain markdown file. So clearly this cluster is about uptrain and it's consistent. All of the um, chunks that we're looking at are part of that same file. And we're not using the file name in the embedding, by the way. So it's able to naturally find this, the fact that these embeddings are from the same file. Okay, let's look at one other one. 
So we've selected those. I will rerun this. Okay, file name, building rag from scratch. Building rag from scratch, lower level. This is a this doc is a hub for showing how you can build rag and agent-based apps using only lower level of strategy. Okay. Next chunk, same thing. Building rag from scratch. Building rag from scratch. Okay, so this gives me quite a bit of confidence that our clustering is doing a good job. Because when I take a, a look at well-defined clusters, then we see coherent similarity. And hopefully this makes it clear why sampling from each cluster will give us a diverse representation of our data, because we're making sure to cover all these different topics. Um, all right. Maybe we can do something on the boundary that's not so clear cut. How about, oops, how about these? Okay, integrations, integrations, integrations. Okay. That seems consistent. What about on the other side of this same cluster? Oops. Okay, index stop markdown. Retriever modes, retrievers, retrievers. Okay, so right now these seem to be in the same cluster because they're given the same color. Um, but really they're, they're not all that relevant to each other. So that might indicate we need more clusters because we're finding that the points over here don't seem to have a strong match to these points over here. Although I don't know enough about the details of those things. M maybe they are related in some more abstract way. Let's see. One, one of the clusters was small. Let's see which one that is. Okay, cluster six only has 22 points. Okay, cluster six is up here. Just make sure, yes, cluster six. Okay. Index guide, LPG index guide. All right, I don't know exactly what this is, but the fact that they all reference index guide in the file name gives me some confidence. So again, the idea is that if we just took a random sample across this whole embedding space, we might not cover any points from this small cluster, and then we might have a blind spot when evaluating this, because some of these have really particular structure in them. Like there's these API Definitions. Let me just show you an example. Yes, here's an example of what I'm referring to. So which cluster is this? Five, okay. So you see they have this structured information, but this would be relatively difficult, perhaps, to generate question and answers for and it might confuse retrieval. So maybe we want to ignore these altogether. But um, in any case, we need to make sure that we represent them and know about them. And thankfully, we have a cluster that's capturing that sort of stuff. Hopefully, that gives you a feel for what clustering can do on top of embeddings and why we would want to do this. Clearly, this is segmenting our space into meaningful and coherent pieces. So now what we're going to do is sample from each of these clusters. And I think it goes without saying that you would want to iterate on this clustering process. I'm just choosing 20 and moving on for illustration purposes, but you might want to actually dive deeper into this, increase the number of clusters, decrease, play with things, and really understand the data that you have. But for now, we're just going to assume that we've done a good job clustering and move on. And it's really quite simple. We're just going to group by the cluster and then 
apply a function that does some sampling. So when I do that, now I've created this new data frame called DF samples. And for each cluster, I've sampled, in this case, 10 points. Maybe instead of using an integer here, you would want to write a function that sampled based on how big the cluster is, so that bigger clusters had more samples than smaller clusters. Lots of options. The point is we need to sample some from each. And now we can, for example, take our data frame, pass in the indices like this, and then sample from those to see. So let's take a look at cluster zero. And the way I choose cluster zero is I choose the zeroth index here, which passes in these indices. So we see this one is about a lot of things from index.markdown. So it seems to be general information about RAG systems. What is context augmentation? This one actually seems to be a bit of a mismatch of concepts, and it might be a candidate for one that needs to be broken down further. Let's take a look through some of these other clusters. Response evaluation, usage pattern, evaluating. And these are sort of useless chunks here. Okay, so this seems to be about evaluation. I see the word evaluate a bunch. Response evaluation. Okay. Cluster 2 seems to have a lot of these weird kind of API definitions. But in any case, I think this is a reasonable start. So maybe we take 10 maybe we take 20, the number doesn't really matter. I'm gonna start with 10, save these, and then in the next video, we can start trying to generate question answer pairs. And in that, maybe we'll find that some of these chunks don't lend themselves well. And that'll be good feedback too, because then we'll start getting an idea of what types of chunks perhaps need to be eliminated from our system. That's it for this video. We ran clustering on our embeddings of our chunks we sampled some chunks from each of those clusters, and that's what we have here. In the next video, we'll take these sampled chunks and we will give them to an LLM and ask it to generate question-answer pairs for us, which will then be the basis for our evaluation data set.